Welcome back to the Red Cup Review. I am excited today to bring you guys the Tweeterhead 1-6 scale Green Lantern Hal Jordan figure, number 14 in their set of their superpowers line. This is the exclusive version with the ammo coming out of the ring and going into the back of the statue here. We're going to be taking a look at that, the whip around. We're going to be taking a look at the paint and the sculpt. And as always, subscribe and hit that bell because Shazam will be coming up next in the Tweeter headline. I've never seen a company that's able to take the pre-order and bring it to full production and nail it as well as Tweeterhead does with their statues. It's practically exactly what you see on the box. This is exactly what you're getting in hand. 99% of those companies better take notice. Without further ado, we give you the greatest Green Lantern, Hal Jordan. If you're a fan of the Superpowers art style, you're not going to get better than this Green Lantern sculpt. This is, in my opinion, probably their best face sculpt that I've seen on a tweeter head statue. There's absolutely no paint defects on mine, which is always a nice surprise when buying a any type of statue or collectible, that is. He's got the silver in his eyes. There's no paint bleeding or, you know, paint bleeding meaning from one paint to another sometimes there are smudges and stuff on statues this has absolutely none all the hairline work as far as hair to face sculpt is on point there's no sloppy paint work at all around the ears and from his mask to his face he's got that nice strong jaw that you would expect when you think of heroic art style for superhero action figures or statues or whatnot and this guy nails him to a t there's nice brush work as far as um like, you know, bringing out the detail in the statue, right? Like the the blacks that they use kind of to bring out the details in the sculpt itself. And that's very well done. The mask is raised. It's not just painted on. Also, the sculpt in the chest emblem is also sculpted on. So it's got a nice little 3D effect thing going on there. And we're going to turn it around to the back so you can see the detail in the back of the statue. Right? You can see how nice... They did the paintwork on this statue. This is my favorite tweeter head statue. Green Lantern isn't necessarily my favorite DC character, but he is way up there for me. But this statue perfectly, perfectly nails Green Lantern. I cannot say that enough. You would think that there's a little imperfection in the arm right here. That isn't. That's just the way the light is capturing that specific. See, it goes away once you do that uh, in that area. That's, that's this area right over here. Now, moving down the statue... We're going to take a look at his at the ab work here and a little bit of where the key plugs in for his handpiece. You can see the brush work on the abs isn't overdone, so it looks quite natural. Very cool. His The statue has like these uh, molded, as like part of the statue itself, they're not just painted on these pieces right here to give some more texture to the outfit, which is pretty cool. And here is a giant pain in the ass, but probably the coolest thing about this statue is you have an extra hand in the exclusive version, which comes with a little hole in the ring, and then you can plug this extra piece out here. This is the exclusive piece. It's a translucent piece of, I guess, ammo that keys into the back of the, of the massive base that we're going to take a look at in a second. But it can probably snap pretty easy, so I wouldn't mess with it too much. I'm never going to display my statue without this specific piece in there. So once you key it into here, it also keys into the back. And it's perfectly done for the way you would expect the Green Lantern to generate his stuff. I know the side so side show statue casted it in like this like darker green for their uh, their John Stewart statue, and to me that just did not look right at all. This is how you do Green Lantern's ring constructions, in my opinion. Here's a close-up of the swap-out lantern hand. Yes, he does come with a swap-out on this arm that detaches from up over here. And it's an entire one piece. This does not dangle, so it does not, like, you can't, like, hit it and it's going to sway. I wanted to show you guys the inside of the lantern itself, though, because it has that same translucent effect that the base does. 
And that's where Green Lantern gets his power from, right? He recharges his ring and his ring battery. So that's a real nice effect because uh, and, and, and decision that they made because when the light hits it at a certain angle, it almost has a semi-glow effect going on on the inside from where the power battery is actually generating its source of power. So that's really cool. Nice effect. Good job. Thumbs up. We're going to wrap up this part of the review by talking about the base very quickly and show you guys how the exclusive key in here for the ammo into the back of the giant construct Gatling guns, uh, they got a key in there. And the feet in the front, let's take a look here. You guys can see this little piece of mold right there is where the metal keys in on this foot. And there is absolutely no gaps between the feet and the actual base, which is really, really nice. I know some of the other tweeter head statues had an issue that didn't necessarily bother me, but I know it bothered a few people. So the feet sit perfectly on this. You're not going to get any leaning problems with this statue. Taking a look at the actual mold, this is how you mold Green Lantern's constructs. You got a $270 statue that outdid some other companies, you know, the some of the other five, six, seven hundred dollar statues that molded their their bases in all plastic, uh, not plastic, in, in all solid one color. Not good. This is how you do the Green Lantern constructs. And there's not multiple layers of paint in here. It's just various thicknesses of actual sculpt, which gives the illusion that there's darker green here and lighter green over here. This is a thinner molded piece. These are thinner molded pieces, so it allows the light to permeate a little bit easier. And where it's thicker, it's going to look darker, and that is absolutely awesome in my opinion. Taking a look at the back here, this is like the, one of the coolest bases I've ever seen. I love how, again, over here, how it's like lighter and darker, and you can see the different shadows of the, the actual mold itself capturing the light and allowing it to look like there's multiple layers of green going on here, even though it's only molded in one solid color. Excellent. Huge thumbs up. Coolest, coolest idea for a base in, a, in the Tweeterhead statue line that I am yet to see. Good luck, Chad and Tweeterhead family, trying to outdo this one. This part of the video, we're going to show you about like the swap out parts and how they fit in there. And I'll show you a little bit more detail on the white because the way the LED lights are pointing on the statue, you're not going to see too much of the detail in the hand. As you can see there, it's not just flat white. They actually added a little bit of dark brush work on the white of his gloves in order to let the detail stand out a little bit more. And in case you didn't want to have him holding his lantern, as you can see up in there. You give him this hand and notice that there is a little peg hole in there. I don't know why there's that peg hole in there, but probably it's the same mold as the one holding the lantern is not. And you kind of just put that on there like that. And the magnet's really strong and it holds it in there. I don't know why you would want not want him holding his lantern, but you can do that. And as far as his other hand goes, this is the regular hand. This will come with your non-exclusive versions of the statue if that's what you choose to buy. You can see the ring there molded ever so nicely. And that will be going up on that arm right there. Now, I'm not going to show that to you guys and unpeg this because the ammo belt is a huge pain in the neck. And I'm always going to have my statue displayed like that. And I don't want to risk breaking it, honestly. So, that hand will be up where that is. Minus, obviously, this version has the, that version has the hole in it to put the ammo in. Okay? And that is the detail on that hand. Also has that same black brush strokey type detail bringing out paint job as the other one i could not be happier the year is 1984 and i'm taking some of my older brother's action figures the superpowers line and i the, the colors just draw my eye i go cuckoo for cocoa puffs over it and here i am now some 37 years later and I have my adult versions of the superpowers collectibles that I always wanted. Now, I'm more of an action figure guy. But as far as statue goes, this is where I'm going. I'm selling off all my premium formats. You guys can tell me till you're blue in the face. About 27-inch Prime 1 Super Premium Format, ultra-detailed, modern takes on characters. I don't care. I like my stuff looking classy and streamlined, which is why Tweeter Head's for me. And hopefully it'll be for you. There's links down below where you guys can order your tweeter heads. Look, there is no paid promotion with this. Tweeter heads not sending me these statues. I went out and had to seek these out. I was late on the line with the Wonder Woman. And you guys can go check out my other reviews of the Superman, Wonder Woman, and Batman back in the Red Cup archives. I could not be happier with this collection. 
I am revamping my statue collection to reflect just these, and Shazam is on his way. He's actually in the mail right now, and he will be one of the next reviews we bring you on this channel, so don't forget to hit that bell and drop a like or a comment. Let me know what you think of the tweeter headline. I know they're kind of moving away from the superpowers aesthetic and doing a little bit more details uh, in their newer statues. They have a new Superman up for pre-order, and... I gotta tell you, while those also look amazing, it's the classic, more streamlined stuff that grabs my eye. That's it. That's all we got on this episode of the Red Cup Review. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you on our future episode. We hope you guys enjoy collecting as much as we do here on this channel. You wouldn't be watching if you didn't. Take it easy. We'll see you for the Shazam Review. Take care.